Hi guys, Mr. Off Waffles here. Just before Targda Toten released, Treyarch did a very short stream with certain members of the Zombies team, including Craig Houston and Jason Blundell, reacting to the fact that the map was coming out and Zombies was ending. The Ether story was over after all this time. So today, I'm going to be showing you the video of me reacting to it that I didn't upload on the day because I was so busy with the map pack, but that I think is actually quite a nice send-off to the mode that we've been playing for for so long. So sit back, relax, and enjoy what could be the last stream like this that Treyarch ever do, depending on how the future goes. Enjoy the video, guys. As we pick up the Ether story after the events of Alpha Omega, we now have Ultimus and Primus working together. That was a really, really fun map to do, but really to get to the end of the story, it becomes apparent that they also are gonna want a little bit more help and that's where Victus comes in. Right. DLC 4 is always a special one. It's um, it's the end of each arc, right? DLC oh. 4, your expectations, your story is kind of built to a certain point. Uh, it's also the place where we give you a couple of zingers. That's a place where we uh, we challenge the community. And this being the very end of the Ether story uh, means we've got a surprise in store for, for everyone. So when players get to Tagged or Tone, they're going to immediately recognize this is an iconic classic location from a previous Call of Duty map called The Dead but that something's different about it. Call of the Dead actually took place in the future, whereas right. Tagged or Toten's going to take place in the past. So previously you heard some audio recordings of Richtofen experimenting on the Ultimus crew. Yep. And now in this map, you'll be able to see where that took place. In Tagged or Toten, the, the map is set in the daytime. So now lines of sight are a lot farther. We really wanted to play around with verticality gameplay. Who is that? We have features such as the flingers, wow. the zip lines, and we have a bunch of uh, geometry where we can platform around zombies to get around zombies faster. We have a new perk called Blaze Phase, and we're also bringing back two fan favorite elixirs, Power Vacuum and Secret Shopper. Oh, First wow. First got Power Vacuum, which gives you a uh, increased chance to get power-up drops. And also, there's no restrictions on the, on the number of drops. Luna. In the so it's just raining power-ups, and then you just go vacuum them all up. The next thing is Secret Shopper. This one allows you to buy ammo for your weapon at any wall buy location. Right. And Show unlike the, the last game, you can now buy ammo for your wonder weapon. The new weapon is the Wunderwaffe DG Schafschutze. It's got a sniper scope on it, which allows it to electrify zombies in an area from very far away. In a weird way, going back to this location, uh, the Siberian facility, it's, it's bringing the characters full circle. It's, you know, they've been, they've been trying to escape from the cycles that they've been in ever since they, they cycles. broke out of Blood of the Dead, but in a lot of ways, they have to just keep confronting their past. The best thing about the Ether maps is working with all the uh, fractured timelines and all the uh, associated narrative with it. It's always great when the fans try to piece together kind of what we're doing. We've been on this wild ride for zombies for so long, again, over a decade of making zombies, and to see the Ether storyline finally come to a conclusion, it's pretty emotional. Um, there's, there's been so much, so many ups and downs, so many different maps, and so many stories that we've told within the larger narrative. That it's actually pretty exciting for fans and, and the hardcore zombies community to really experience this final map for us. As the curtains are coming to a close, I suppose the, the kind of final message I would say is, you know, first of all, to the team. If I've received any uh, uh, success through all this time, it's because I've been standing on the shoulders of giants. And so the team have, uh, uh, have never let me down in any endeavor we've done over the past 10 years uh, for zombies. And it, it kind of chokes me up to kind of think about that because they rocked and rolled through the whole thing and uh, turned out amazing game content, um, which uh, each and every one of them can be incredibly proud of. A big thank you to all of our Zombies fans and the whole community out there. You guys have been along for the ride on this one through all these different maps. You've been there the whole time. A huge kind of heartfelt thank you to, to each and every member out there. All of their opinions and their passion uh, mean the world to me and I know to the team. Here with us in studio today to talk to us about all things zombies and to catch us up on what to expect wow. with Tagged or Toten. We've got our lead writer, Craig Houston. Craig, thanks for joining us today. My pleasure, John. Good to see you. Oh, yeah. Good to see you too. Okay, there's a lot to cover here. Yes. This is the conclusion of the Ether yes. storyline. Bring us up to speed. Right. Recap the, the major events that, that brought us to this moment. 
There's That's been tough. so many major events. It's it's been it's been quite the ride. But most recently, the characters, Ultimus and Primus, managed to break themselves out of the loop that they'd been stuck in through um, Black Ops Three and that whole storyline with collecting souls and stuff. We now have Primus Nikolai in charge with a full knowledge of what lays in store for them, taking the characters on yet another journey into what's the unknown for our fans, but is. All in Nikolai's head now. He knows where we're going. All right. Well, if you could um, kind of explain explain to our viewers, like, why this? Why here? Why now? Um, it's yeah. my understanding that the, the comic book series has really kind of helped set us up to, to help bring us this moment. Give us give us a little bit of that context. Yeah, the, co the comic book series, if everyone remembers this fun one, which we did years ago, and that is kind of instrumental for setting up a lot of the story that we're going to be exploring in the new map. We have the reintroduction of the Victus crew who've been sitting in ice at the end of the comic book. In Alcatraz, people will remember seeing them in their little pods in Blood of the Dead. And of course, people speculated as to whether they would get out of the pods. Right. And as people have now seen, they have indeed gotten out of the pods. And they are once again acting as, you know, agents for Richterven and Nikolai in particular. Poor Samuel Stullinger still got the blessing of hearing Richterven in his head, which is right. always fun. Uh, but the characters are being guided a little bit by Nikolai because he needs them to go certain places and achieve certain things for the benefit of everyone. And why this place? Well, talk about things coming full circle. We're going to the Group 935 facility in Siberia that was where so much of our story really began with the original test subjects. Right. right. So I had that a little further down on my list. I wanted to come back to the, yeah. the importance oh. of the, the 935 group. Yeah. Well, Anything they, you want to touch on now? Um, I, I guess one of the, like I say, the, much like we did in Alpha Omega, there's a lot of elements that have been sitting in the story that people kind of need some closure on, are also some dots connected. Mm -hmm. um, going to this Siberian facility is going to allow us to do that because okay. Group 935, as I say, that's where, where they did some of their most nefarious work. And um, there are people uh, and there are objects in the location that are going to be essential for Nikolai to achieve what he knows he needs to achieve. Yeah. All right. Um, <laughs> so it, whenever we, during our, our last live stream for Alpha Mega, uh, we talked a little bit about the writing process. Yes. And I, just to kind of give people an idea of, <laughs> of uh, the, the brilliance that is lodged between those years, but the amount of work that requires to bring a story of this complexity to life. You, you brought a some visual yeah, aid. Yeah, the, the, there's a, one particular visual aid. I it's mean, obviously, Dasani. like everything else, this is a team effort. And there's a huge number of people that work on it. Wait. And for 10 years, we've had so many elements building between our design departments, our audio departments, our art departments, our narrative department. But the, the heavy lifting part of it, and this is something I don't know if people really understand when we do these Zombies DLCs, is Within the space of around three months, we have to write and record an entire script. What does three months worth of work look like, Craig? In the case of Alpha Omega, <laughs> that was three months of work. And, you know, these, these aren't blank pages. These are just <laughs> solid pages of dialogue. And, you know, I wanted to... That was a nice sound. Because we mentioned it last time, the, the, the sheer volume of, of writing work and recording work that went into it. And... Um, because of the nature of zombies, I don't think people realize what five, five and a half thousand lines looks like. Yeah. Uh, that's what it looks like. It also looks like bags under my eyes and considerable stress, but it's all driven by passion and love. But whenever you, whenever you talk about sort of numbers of lines, I, I, there are probably no weightier lines than the ones carried this time. Uh, probably some mm. heavy duty material to cover. Yeah, I, I think at the end of the last stream, I actually said, I've got to run off and finish it. I was kind of... <laughs> Uh, in the middle of it, and I'm now through that entire process, and um, it's 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 been quite the ride. It's been quite the ride. I'm I'm very very interested to see how everyone reacts to it because, again, as we did with Alpha Omega, we're doing something a little bit different this time. Uh, for the map, as people should know by now, we're going to be playing as the Victus crew, which is great to bring them back. You know, as I say, we kept them on ice for a few years, wondering how and when they would return, but we always knew they would. 
Um, but what's really fun this time round is Ultimus and Primus, they're not fighting zombies at the moment. They are actually in another location having a really good time. Mm. They're telling some stories. They're telling some jokes. There's going to be some truths come out. There's going to be some things revealed about both Primus and Ultimus that people perhaps didn't really know. They're even going to sing a song. You know, people have seen in the cutscene that, yeah, they're having a drink and they're having a good time. And by God, they've deserved it after everything they've been through. So right. it's, it's, on to, it's on for Victus to do all the hard work this time. Well, speaking of, of that having a good time, we, you brought with us, or you um, brought with us, you brought the intro cutscene. <laughs> Um, yes. And so there are a couple things going on uh, that will sort of raise some eyebrows uh, for fans of Blood of the Dead, the yep. Campfire, Frozen Forest. There's yep. a lot, lot to unpack here. It's Set this up connected. for us. It's all connected. Right. Um, as I said earlier, the, the location they're at is, is really, really important. Uh, I don't want to give too much away, but there are other guest characters that people have speculated in or wondered about for a long, long time. Gina. Um, but really so much of what's tied into this location and its history. I mean, people that remember the original Call of the Dead, George e. Romero in his intro was talking about he found all these weird documents of all these crazy experiments in. Right. And the original map, you didn't see any evidence of that really. You a know, bit. Uh, it was mostly a coastal area, but a bit. just as we did in Alpha Omega, this is a substantially larger play space and people are going to be able to go to areas they've never been before and in turn find out things they didn't know before and meet characters they've never met before. All the fun stuff. Very ah. interesting. Interesting. All right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> We're going to have plenty of that okay. today uh, with, uh, I, with I the I just theme. don't want anyone to call me that when all this is done. <laughs> uh, there'll be a few other names. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Craig, then with that, then let's roll the intro cutscene. So we have seen this before. Okay, so Craig, correct me if I'm wrong. Time that we get all three crews together, right? And together is a funny word. Ah, it's a really, really funny word. I mean, you know, some, like shrouding your zombies some, or something like. It, careful. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, they, they get to interact, uh, which which they've never really done to this extent. Gameplay. But it's it's a different thing to what we did in um, in Alpha Omega. I mean, if if all 12 characters had been playable, I think that would have been impossible and the script would have been up to here and right. I, I, I just wouldn't have been able to do it. As I say, it's a, it's a, it's a more fun thing to do <gasps> to give Primus and Ultimus a completely different environment to exist in. Yeah. So, you know, it, it, the fun thing through the quest is, you know, Samuel Stulinger, you know, he's always got Richter in his head, no one else can hear him. Right. So that, that, that leads to some comedy, but, you know, the other characters are actually kind of direct... Uh, Directed a little bit more by Nikolai. I mean, people who remember Black Ops 2 will remember that Maxis used to speak through radios and pieces of technology. Ooh. There's a similar thing going on here with Nikolai as he tries to guide the characters through the main quest. That's cool. Um, and, yeah, get the thing he needs. Hmm. Mm. Very interesting. One of the things that uh, I think is, is really interesting and I think people would appreciate a little insight into is um, while all of us have a relationship with these four characters, you've also developed a, a professional working relationship with the, the, the voice actors. actors that have brought them to life for so long. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, so you we've got what Steve Blum is Dempsey, yep. uh, Nolan North, Rick Defin, uh, Fred Tatashore, Nikolai, Tom Kane. and Tom Kane is Takio. Yep. Talk about working with these guys for so <laughs> no long. No love for the Victus kind of, actors. <laughs> where we're at now. Where we're at now, yeah, this this is where it could get emotional. Where we're at now is a very, very interesting place because, you know, we're not lying when we say this is this is the end of the line for Primus, Ultimus, and, and Victus. Um, it looks I'm really, really dark. pleased, and I know the cast are pleased that we've kind of gone out all out on the last two maps. You know, we got all of Primus and all of, of Ultimus as playable characters, so they got to talk more than they ever did. And now in Tag Der Toten, putting them in that different environment where they're actually just talking to each other and stuff and like I say telling jokes and stories that was something that they really really appreciated I mean the, the song in particular was <laughs> was was quite a challenge just the sheer volume of, of material that they have to get through it's it's been weird because you know we've, we've got to the stage now where I, they know the characters inside out the story is very difficult for them to understand obviously because um, it's it's a bit complex 
Uh, but they, they really, they're so familiar with their characters that, you know, they had a lot of fun switching between Primus and Ultimus at those sessions, you know. Um, right. Over the years, we've done Comic-Con stuff with them and everything. And it's, yeah, I, I've really got to know those guys and the characters mean the world to them. Yeah. And, and that's what's made everything we've done recently very, very poignant. I got a lovely text off Tom Kane the other day that, brought tears to my eyes because I knew there were tears in his eyes as he was writing it. But, yeah. you know, as they say, all good things have to come to an end. Well, to talk a little bit more about that end, uh, we were able to catch up with each of the VO actors oh. and uh, to talk a little bit more about their roles. Wow. In Tagged or Toten. Um, in the early days, we didn't have as many lines. Uh, in <laughs> fact, I think Tank was one of the first of our characters to speak. Uh, and so the sessions were short. They were, it was just like a, a big burst of screaming no, and we're in and out. And uh, <laughs> as we progressed along, there were more and more lines written for us. And especially in this most recent incarnation. Nothing we've done uh, compares to what we've just done. I mean, I, I, I've recorded tens of thousands of lines as Takio. Originally, Takio was almost comic relief. Yeah. I mean, he, he was um, a very stereotypical character, as they all were. Back in the day, uh, when Tank was nothing but a meathead, yes, that was really fun to play. It was uh, fun just to get that out of my body sometimes, because I needed to. Uh, but the best stories for me are the ones where there's a little more depth, there's a little more exploration. With the Alpha Omega map, uh, the fans got more Richtofen than they probably bargained for. Uh, <laughs> and as an actor, just being able to explore the two different versions of Richtofen with Ultimus and Primus, uh, it, it was a dream come true. Ultimus is more ultimate. I know, I remember. Okay, here we go. Going from very drunk, loud, angry guy to sober guy, and then becoming a leader. Uh, was a really interesting thing. And to see that in the other characters and that Richtofen hands over the responsibility to, to me, to, to Nikolai, realizing that Nikolai has to be the one to, to carry out these tasks. It was probably one of the biggest character arcs I've ever played. The characters are much more than ever before allowed to just be themselves. When we got to sit around as friends and actually reflect on this journey that we have all traveled, um, it was kind of a nice bow on a life well lived. Wow. You know, I think Richtofen's journey through this uh, world or worlds, times, uh, ages, whatever you want to call it, this, uh, his whole, his whole being, it's been one of the most interesting uh, interesting projects I've ever had the privilege to work on. Looking back on how the story has progressed, as Nikolai would say, all good and bad things must come to an end. And we really did need to have some closure on it. As sad as I am as a fan and, you know, we love doing this work, it's, it's sad to say goodbye to it. The changes that we've all gone through, at least for myself personally and professionally, have been surprisingly profound for a video game. The different personalities that I was able to explore as an actor, uh, the lines, the, the just amazing lines that we've got to say over, over 10 years, uh, it's, just been, it's just been fantastic. So uh, it's been wunderbar, as the doctor would say. Hey. Watching these characters grow and change and interact. I mean, yeah, of course you get, you know, a little emotional about, is this the end? Um, I'm, I'm grateful to have been on this journey with my friends and, uh, and in life, they are my friends too. It's a family. We are this amazing dysfunctional family <laughs> and I'm, I'm just grateful to be part of it. All right, Craig. Mm. Uh, so having wow. spoken to those actors, yeah. Let's come back to uh, your work with the Victus crew as well. I know that 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 was that was a really fun one because I think all of them were a little bit surprised when they got the call because <laughs> mm. it's been quite you know we kept them alive in the comic book well, kind of alive we kept them in stasis in the comic book um, That's so funny. and they'd been in early on the year they'd done they'd done their stuff for Blackout obviously but I don't think they really expected to get the call yeah. so um, when they came in it was really 
refreshing and, f and fun to hear just how much is lived with them. You know, it's like Stephanie that plays um, Misty, you know, she, she's like, yeah, this is a character I get asked about. This is in my canon kind of thing. Yeah. And it was the same with Keith, who's, who's Rossman, and Dave, who, who plays Stullinger, right. and Scott, who plays Malton. And um, yeah, there was just, it was a really fun energy because we hadn't worked with them for so long. Uh, we hadn't really written them for so long, so I think yeah. that that helped, you know, shake things up a lot. A lot. Fun to get the a band lot. back together. Yeah, get the whole band back together. Nice. All right. Nice. Um, oh, talk for anyone that uh, enjoyed talking to the Ultimus Primus Cruise. Uh, we will have a panel discussion featured by you. You had a chance to sit down with these guys and kind of talk yeah. through. Everything. Yeah, I, I think I think that's that's one of the ones fans will probably like a lot more than my silly old droning or <laughs> Jason's cryptic nonsense or any of the <laughs> other. <laughs> it's nice for them to just see those guys as themselves because they, they, as I say, they've been a joy to work with and these characters mean the whole world to them. So yeah, it's very different to, to, to this kind of environment. You know, I'm wondering if there's, there's things that they shouldn't have said that we'll, need to, that we'll watch last minute. Oh my goodness, because you know, they, you know, they respect their NDAs and stuff, but they don't know what they're allowed to say out loud or not. Yeah, it all gets And Nolan, out. Nolan in particular, you know, the, the ad-libs that can come out of that guy's mouth make Richterven look like a nun. Yeah, yeah, they do. Um, <laughs> but that will be out in about two weeks. Uh, okay, okay. Carefully editing, editing out some of those Nolan North gems. Yes. Uh, we'll use that in the outtake reel. Um, so we've, we've kind of gotten to a place where Love to ask you for any sort of like closing remarks, comments for fans. Um, Easter egg hints. You know, it's it's a pretty momentous occasion. Are we at closing remarks already? Closing remarks. I don't want to go. Really, it's, you know, on behalf of everyone um, who's ever walked on zombies, and that's a lot of people, a lot of people over, over the last 10 plus years. Um, I'd just really like to thank the fans for all their support and love over the years because this has been the, the the greatest professional experience of my life i'm very very proud of what we've done and um i hope that the i hope that the community gets the closure that they deserve shall we say because come back to things like that stupid script we've, we've given it our all we really have yeah um, well it's it's been uh a lot of memories, like even just being able to uh, like join the VO crew uh, at Comic Con and um, you and Jason last year at San Diego. It's been quite the adventure. Uh, it has been quite the adventure, absolutely. All right. So with that, uh, I believe that we brought our gameplay trailer for yep. Tagged or Toten. Tagged or Toten. It's funny, isn't it? Tagged or Toten. You know how we started with Nacht der Untoten? <laughs> Language is an amazing thing, John. <laughs> Words. 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 With that, that's how it ends. Trailing. Words. <laughs> Again, this is a trailer I've already reacted to, already got it on the channel and stuff. I'm just going to talk over it. <laughs> of course, it would end with a dumb word. <laughs> that was quite possibly the last we will see of Craig Houston, Jason Blundell. Mark Maystas, Danny Donahoe, the other guy, <laughs> I'm so sorry, whose name I don't remember. Uh, I'm just going to literally uh, skip over Russ Mann being sick because it's disgusting and I don't want to see that again for the 19th million time, 19 millionth time rather. It's emotional, man. It really is. The fact that we've, oh, God damn it, I tried so hard to skip it. It's emotional. The fact that we've come all this way and... This is where we've ended up is pretty nuts. I mean, they say we're coming full circle and we're going to learn more stuff in the map and that's all well and good. But I like the fact that Jason's final kind of message to camera there was basically a thank you to the team for being really solid over the years. I think that that is that is a, a nice way to kind of wrap up this season and maybe this story. I mean, they're talking like Ether is going away forever and that clashes with other things that they keep saying about how Ether seems to be going away for now, but quite possibly is going to return in the future. So at this point, I don't know what's going to happen, but I think that that was a nice send off from Jason. I think that 
Craig did a good job there on stream as well, trying to kind of bring people up to speed a little bit, at least, on what the hell's going on. And it's going to be a weird and emotional map to play. It sounds like the characters in the forest are basically just going to provide exposition for however long you're playing the map, which could be cool. But yeah, it's going to be it's going to be strange as well having that rush of information all happen at once when the story's been going on so long. And it is also sort of what happened in Revelations, right? We got this like extreme rush of info right at the end. It's important, I think, to reflect on what is most likely going to be the last stream like this of its kind, certainly for a number of years. Because even though next year it's Black Ops 5, and even though presumably that will have zombies, it could just be chaos. We don't know. And it will be chaos picking up in the middle of a season and won't really have the cultural impact that I think the end of the Ether story is going to have, or at least should have. So this one's a special one, guys. And I, I wanted to definitely kind of honor that. Guys, hopefully you've enjoyed this video. I'm going to wrap things up here and get back to playing the map. I'll uh, see you guys soon, hopefully, in more tag videos. All right, bye for now.